Chris Scalzer here with Matt Howell. And on this episode of The First Run, woo, where have we been? <laughs> we have been away for quite a while. I was ill, not deathly ill, but ill. And then I had some uh, deep, deep psychological, uh, emotional problems that I was dealing with. But thankfully, uh, I think we may have settled those as much as whiskey allows. So uh, we're going to keep trudging forward. This week, we're going to talk about Turbo Kid because why not? Plus, you know what? It's, it's, it's the doldrums, Matt. It's, it's, it's the end of the season, so there's like nothing out in the theaters. But don't let that despair you. Is that the proper term for that? No, don't let that put you in despair. Don't let that... Deter you. Deter you. That's a good one. I like that one. So we're going to tell you what the big releases are for the rest of the year because there's hope out there. It's, it's not over. There's still stuff out there that you may want to see. We'll tell you it's coming up on Blu-ray and DVD as well as upcoming Tuesday. So uh, it's going to be a fun show. It's good to be back. And uh, let's start everything off with Turbo Kid. I will destroy you with my Turbo Glove, the ultimate weapon against the robot threat. But to be a true hero, you'll have to save your girlfriend. Hey, what's that in your head? It's a, it's a, it's a comic book. What's it about? It's about a Turbo Rider. <gasps> That's rad. I always wonder what the other side looked like. It's kind of gray and dusty. Well, I could show you. Around here, we like to do things with a little more joie de vie. Where is she? Release the girl. This is gonna get ugly. As you may know, the situation is critical. We have reached maximum casualty level. Who exactly are you supposed to be? Turbo Rider. This is it, soldier. We have to hit these sand machines with everything we've got. Find them. Kill them. We need back their heads on bikes. I'm meeting up with an old mate. We're gonna strike the Zeus. Ah, what do you say? Let's roll. So Matt, Turbo Kid is a movie you and I have been talking about for a little while now, about possibly checking out. It's a post-apocalyptic movie set in 1997, I believe is the date. <laughs> uh, so I seem, hopefully we seem to have dodged that bullet. Uh, and everything, it's basically how I looked at it. It's, it's basically what, it's set in the Mad Max world, but instead of Australia, we're in Canada. I think it's the best way to, like, this is why I feel how, what would have happened in that universe mm-hmm. in Canada is where we have <laughs> Turbo Kid. So everybody has BMXs, and they have bikes, they run around on bikes, which is really kind of funny to see these really kind of scary, intimidating guys rolling up on a, co- on a bike with a banana seat and the tall han- handlebars. <laughs> it's interesting. So it's about this young kid, and it's his desperate attempt to survive this wasteland. And uh, he meets uh, a nice girl who may be more or less than she seems. And she goes up against one of the ultimate character bad guys, right? And Michael Ironsides, who everybody mm-hmm. loves. You know, the guy who blows up people's heads in scanners if you uh, need a little refresher, as well as a bunch of other things. So it's basically this kid finding this power glove which looks suspiciously like the nintendo power glove that allows him to uh shoot lasers and cool stuff out and basically obliterate people and he decides to become his favorite superhero to save the day rescue the girl stop the bad guy avenge something i don't know he teams up with a guy whose brother was killed by michael ironside i guess so maybe he's helping avenge that i don't know (laughs) So this thing walks a fine line, I think, because when you do these kind of things, when you make these kind of movies where they're deliberately made for a particular on, uh, audience, maybe people who enjoy cult films with a dash of irony, uh, who are trying to kind of pay homage to those 80s action films. But if you do it wrong, it's really, really bad, and it's too obvious. So, Mac, I'm kind of curious, where does this come down for you? Is this, is this a nice honest to goodness b movie adventure or like like i maybe it's like uh, like the perfect for a double feature with wolf cop or is this more just a complete <laughs> unadulterated mess that fails everything it tries to hit what do you think um you know i i, I rather enjoyed it I, I thought it was uh i thought it was pretty fun um you know i think you hit the nail on the head i mean a lot of these things uh, these kind of like uh I don't. I want to. I want to. The only word I can think of is like a homage, a, a homage to to kind of like a, a past style. Like it can be really good, like uh, um, House of the Devil, or it can mm. be really bad, like you know, 
any other litany of things that we could probably come up with. Um, but I thought this was actually pretty good. The story was pretty lean, uh, moved along pretty quick. It didn't really wasn't really slow. Um, the acting um, it wasn't half bad. I mean, it wasn't gonna. It's not gonna win any awards come award season. But it's not gonna win a Razzie either. Um, I don't think. Um, I thought they were not you know, as long decent. as not as long as there's an M. Sandler movie out in a calendar year. I think you're that's safe. very true. That's very true. Um, yeah. So I mean, I, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, you know, and it wasn't really kind of over the top wink wink nudge nudge kind of stuff like you know um like really late on the 80s stuff really thick i mean um i like the little little bumper at the very beginning where they said that they were the you know the world's leading producer of laser disc was like the company name flashed up i thought that was pretty <laughs> that funny. definitely sets the tone you know exactly yeah. what you're getting into with that that's true yeah um and it is <laughs> and it is something like you know as Connecticut's um something you would see on a Saturday afternoon on channel 20 back in 1984 you know I mean that's just the kind of thing that was out there but I, I thought it was pretty good yeah and I, I certainly appreciated all the gore that's for sure the, uh, let me tell you yeah this is not a family friendly friendly film because it's it's almost entirely is in in some ways the way it's how it's how earnest it is and how genuinely 80s all shucks kind of everybody is in some ways yeah but it is really just over the top carnival esque, you know, gore. It really, yeah. is. and I, I got it. I I do enjoy that stuff. So I, I I did I did like that a lot. I part of me, oh, I was kind of waiting to always kind of see the what the guy in the weird big metal hockey mask thing actually looked like. So I was kind of yeah. disappointed we didn't get that reveal. Uh, but still, I, all in all, I felt it was a nice, fun '80s throwback. If you listen to the show with any regularity, you know of my affection for scores in films. And this one totally nails it, too, with the uh, 80s synth score. Uh, it didn't have the same impact to me like it did when we watched It Follows, because I think, mm. I, you know, but still, it's the same type of thing. So along with the Laserdesk promo in the beginning, <laughs> as soon as the, the electronic stuff starts to swell, you know you're in for a treat. So, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it as well. I thought it was a lot of fun. I'm glad we got to check it out. I don't know if there's a real high rewatch value for me here. I don't know if it's something I really feel like, oh, man, let's watch Turbo Kid again. You know, it, it, I, I didn't feel that. But all in all, I think it's it's a success. It's It does exactly what it's, it tries to do. And it's fun and it's dumb. And, uh, oh, absolutely over the top, you know, stuff at every chance. So, yeah, I, I enjoy yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely not the – I mean, if – House of the Devil and the Grindhouse films, um, you know, if those are kind of the gold standard for these kind of movies like that. I mean, it's it's definitely below that, but it's definitely like way better than something like Hobo with a Shotgun, which was just almost unwatchable. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think this is a, I think this is a lot of fun. Um, you know, and I you know I would watch it again. Um, I mean, it would be it's kind of one of those perfect uh, you know on the background while you're doing stuff kind of movies after you watch it the first time. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. And it doesn't have the same type of, when you say like a house of the devil, I don't know if it has that same, well, it's a different film. That's a straight out of horror film. That's an right. 80s throwback. This is a throwback to the absolute ridiculous 80s action films. So it's different, yeah. but yeah, it's successful. I really, I enjoyed it as well. Yeah. It's like Rad and Mad Max put together. Yeah. You exactly. Remember Rad? Yes. <laughs> I never saw Rad, but I, I remember the posters for it in the VHS box. Very good. So yes. I, I do. <laughs> and Gleaming the Cube, wasn't that another one from the 80s? But yeah, that was skateboarding. Yeah, that's right. That was skateboarding, yeah. So, anyway. If you've seen Mad Max in Canada, also known as Turbo Kid, shoot <laughs> us an email at feedback at com. We both enjoyed it. You can watch it on iTunes right now. I think it's getting a limited theatrical release as well, but it's available for rent and purchase. Matt, let's talk a little bit about what's coming up on Blu-ray and DVD. Furious 7, the extended cut, is being released. So you get the theatrical version as well as the extended cut. Best Buy has an exclusive steelbook. Walmart has exclusive packaging with some extra features. And then there's also a limited edition uh, box set that's in the shape of the wheel, the rim. Or actually, no, it's the whole wheel. It has all the films in it. So uh, there you go, if you're a fan of the Furious films. But I think they're going to make like 10 more of these, so I don't know if I'd bother with the box set, right? Cause there, <laughs> there will be eventually another compendium, ultimate edition of this set. So I don't know. The uh, live-action re remake of Cinderella is being released as well, and Best Buy has a lenticular cover that features the glass slipper, so I guess it shifts and moves around for you. And Target has two exclusive featurettes, Becoming the Prince and Something Magical. Uh, but you can check out the Cinderella if you'd like. 
There's something called a DMA exclusive special feature. I'm not sure what DMA means. I'm wondering if it's a digital only. Like you have okay. to buy from digital outlets. Includes some deleted scenes with the director Kenneth Branagh. Uh, the Beach Boys film. Well, we're really focusing more on Brian Wilson. Love and Mercy is being released. Matt, it's the one with Paul Dano and John Cusack playing different roles, different times, I should say, of Brian Wilson's career. It's supposed to be a fantastic film. I have not been able to catch up with it as of yet. Uh, but includes some behind-the-scenes featurettes, deleted scenes, and a commentary by the director. One of Disney Nature films, Monkey Kingdom, which I saw, is a lot of fun. Uh, if you like those Disney Nature movies, that's being released as well. Heaven Knows What uh, is being released, which stars... Written, it's actually say, Heaven Knows What blends fiction, formalism, and raw verite. It follows a young heroin addict who roams the streets of New York to panhandle and get her next fixed while her unstable boyfriend drifts in and out of her life at random. From what I understand, this is supposed to be a pretty good film, so this is your big chance to check that out. New to Blu ray, one of my favorite film noirs, Matt. You ever seen Murder My Sweet with Dick Powell as Philip Marlowe? I have not. It's a good one, and it kind of. It revitalized Dick Powell's career. He was kind of typecast as a musical kind of guy until he uh, did this film. It, it's, he's almost kind of out of... It's one of those where he's... You first watch him, he's kind of a small guy, and I guess there was concerns that he just wouldn't be able to pull this off. But I'm telling you, it's one of my all-time favorite film noirs. So if you haven't seen Murder, My Sweet, it's a great one. It helped, actually helped The Big Sleep get made. Mm. Uh, it would help because uh, the writer... of who What the hell is the, the writer's name? Holy cow, I'm blanking on it right now. Dashiell but, Hammett? Yeah, so it helped him, though, sell the, the, the script or the screenplay, the story, for The Big Sleep to get made. So if, uh, if Murder, My Sweet was not a success, you never would have seen Bogart in The Big Sleep. So, And then uh, Scream Factor is giving us The Legacy. Have you ever seen The Legacy, Matt? I have not. So how far would you go to inherit everlasting life? Would Margaret and her boyfriend Pete have a car accident in the English countryside? The other drivers offer to take them to their lavish country estate to make amends. amends. But once there, they're surprised to learn that all of their house guests are already expecting them. It's supposed to be one of those kind of... It's, it's one of those 80s uh, horror films. I always remember seeing the, the cover to it always stood out to me, which I think it's a, it's a cat's head with a hand sticking out of the bottom and there's like smoke and stuff. I don't know. It was one of those kind of iconic images that always stuck stuck with me when I was a kid walking around the video store trying to see if I could rent the R-rated movies. Uh, but <laughs> that's getting released on Blu-ray as well. And includes an all-new HD transfer and some new interviews as well. Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, the producer's cut is being released. Before, this was only available in the big box set. And you had to buy the deluxe edition. So a lot of people bought it because they wanted to get, you know, the they can't believe that the producer's cut was actually being released. But now you can get the standalone Blu-ray. Sorry, people, uh, for basically <laughs> seven, eight bucks too. It's okay. dirt cheap, but uh, yeah, I guess it, it. I don't know. It's just a, it's supposed to be a different version of the film, right? That the producers wanted, and I guess it was it traveled around in the festival circuit for a while, and that's actually getting an honest to goodness independent release. They're re-releasing all the James Bond films again on Blu-ray as well, Matt. There's an exclusive. There's one big box set with all the movies with a with a empty hole for Spectre, which drives me crazy because there's going to be another Bond film after that. So this box set will be useless in three years. Right. But and Amazon has their own ex exclusive packaging for it. They're doing actor sets as well. So you can get the Connery set, the Roger Moore set. They're splitting those two up into two. But the real, I think, interesting thing about this, I, well, I should tell you that the new Bond set too, the only exclusive new thing is they have new fe two new featurettes with the writers of the last few Bond films, Neil Purvis and Robert Wade. Uh, whatever. I, that's not really enough for me to have to rebuy anything. But what does bring me back in, possibly, are the steel books. Have you seen the covers to these steel books? No, I have not. They're doing steel books for From Russia with Love, Thunderball, You Only Live Twice, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, Diamonds Are Forever, For Your Eyes Only, and then all the Craig films. But what's so great about them is they actually represent, they look more like the opening, you know, the title sequences for all the films. If you haven't seen them, I'm telling you, Google them. They look fantastic. And I'm almost considering buying them again just because they look so great. So uh, that's really, I think, the only thing out of all of this that makes it worth mentioning. And then your straight-to-DVD pick of the week, Matt. I went with Mad Cow. They slaughtered his family, <laughs> cut off his head, and attached it to a human body, wired electrodes to his testicles, and pumped them full of 50,000 volts. And now he wants revenge. After a Frankenstein-like experiment goes horribly wrong, a chainsaw-wielding Mad Cow goes on the rampage around the Boer Wars, 
game lodge, leaving a trail of bad special effects in his wake. <laughs> Enter undercover cop Vince Chopper, who together with vegetarian waitress turned weapons expert Charlize, does battle with Mad Cow in a series of off-the-wall set pieces. But prepare yourself for a series of increasingly bizarre twists, as it's never over when you think it's over. Part man, part cow. Utterly crazy. See what I did there? It's utter, utterly, utter, utterly crazy. You did that. That's a good job. Good I didn't job. do that. They did that. So, Mad Cow. Very nice. I look forward to not watching that. <laughs> so, do you have any new stuff for us? You wanted to jump into the calendar? What would you like to do? Uh, I've got a few things. All right. uh, just because I uh, wanted to be prepared. I know how mad you get when I'm I, less prepared than I'm I usually very, am. I'm very, yes. <laughs> um, all right, so I know you're going to be super excited about this, but apparently uh, they're going to make a Jeepers Creepers three. It's going to start filming in Vancouver in early 27 or early 2016 for planned release later in the year um, or potentially into early 2017. So, what did you think? What do you think about that? I I thought the Jeepers Creepers movies were okay for kind of stupid cheap horror movies. I've only seen the first one. I don't have any real uh, dedication or real. Any, I don't care. Sure. I don't, sure. I don't know if it's... Like I said, I've only seen the first one. I thought it was all right. I'm yeah. not a big uh, Jeepers Creepers acolyte. I don't know if, you know, <laughs> it's fine. Sure. Well, Good for them. yeah. I don't, do, they have, do they have Jeepers Creepers acolytes? I, um, well, I mean, the second one's better. So, I Is mean, it? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I, liked it. I think I liked it better. It kind of just... It kind of just embraced how kind of cheesy and stupid it, it wait, is. Wait, in this wait, wait. Is that the one where all the kids in the bus get attacked? Yeah. Oh, then I have seen that one, too. Oh, you have seen that one? Okay. Yeah, I even, think it's better than the, Justin, than the Justin Long one. Yeah, I'm all set. Whatever. Good for them. I'm glad everybody's got a job. Well, I'm... <laughs> you know, I just... I don't understand you sometimes. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, they've released uh, uh, the Hawkman and Hawk... Uh, are we, is it Hawk Woman or Hawk, are we going with Hawk Girl? Hawk Girl, which I don't understand. Yeah. Why not go Hawk Woman? Why not? Hawk Woman, yeah, I don't know. Hawk Lady? Lady Hawk? Uh, it's something different. Yeah, I know it's something different. Um, yeah, so they released it to the promo picture for that for the Legends of Tomorrow series. Yeah, uh, I'm a little underwhelmed. It looks a little cheesy to me, but hey, you know what? I'm on board still. I, well, I think that's the best you're gonna do. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the costumes from the comics, you're not that green and red. I, I don't think that's gonna fly. Shirtless. There's that too. Well, <laughs> Only he well, is. Yeah, he, only he was shirtless, right? He, yeah. yeah, he's got the belts, I guess, yeah. that hold the wings on, depending on what version of Hawkman. We're going to talk about a screwed up character, comic <laughs> character, when it comes to their, their backstory and their mythos. Whew. Even when they fixed Hawkman, they screwed it up and had to fix it again. <laughs> that one's really screwed up. So, yeah, all I right. saw it. It was all right. I don't, I, yeah. my, the one thing that stuck out to me was the Hawk, Hawk Girl. Why not Hawk Woman? Same thing with Supergirl. Why? Why are we... It's, I, I just... I don't know. I'm getting too... I'm getting to uh, uh, a PC in my old age, I guess. Yeah, I think you are. You just need to calm down a little bit. I mean, it's not. I mean, that is what they're called in the comic. I mean, I guess. I mean, and it's not like Hawkwoman or Superwoman really rolls off the tongue either. So, at yeah. least you're cutting down on syllables, I suppose. As long as they're pretty fully closed, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's really all you can hope for at this point. Power Girl and, you know, is still the worst of all of them. I mean, when it comes to designs for female characters, that's got to be. Yeah, I love how Power Girl is and is love, just is just Supergirl from like a, an alternate dimension mm -hmm. with her boobs hanging out. I love when they tried to explain it to why she has her uniform yeah. like that because she yeah. doesn't have a home, so she doesn't have a symbol on her shirt yet, her chest yet. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. Nice try. <laughs> hey, they made a valiant effort, right? <laughs> yeah. oh, that. Um. All right. Let's see what else. Um. Apparently. Um. You know, Marvel has infected, uh, you know, everything, and uh, Star Wars Episode Seven um, is going to is going rumored to have a, a post credit sequence. Uh, oh. No, not Spider Man, oh, but uh, okay. it's going to have a post credit sequence for Rogue One, the offshoot Star Wars story. Um, I don't, I don't so, care. I don't need that. You don't need I don't, that. I don't. Are, are you are you even really into the whole uh, kind of standalone, non you know kind of contained stories that they're going to be doing for the expanded universe thing they got going on yeah i'm interested i want to see it but i don't know if i need to have uh i don't know if i need to have everything connected together i don't know if i need to have the marvel school where everything is all part of one big large overarching plot i'm fine having my three star wars films and maybe things have some tangential ties great 
but uh, it's fine. I think sure. I don't know. It, it's, it's for some reason it doesn't really evoke any strong emotion in me either way. Yeah, having but I guess credit I guess post credit sequences. I mean, I guess Rogue One though. I mean, it's supposed to take place back in original trilogy times, right? Um, oh, or, is it? I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, I think yeah, I think they're they're playing pretty fast and loose with the timing of those standalone episodes. I believe, like Rogue One, I believe is gonna be have actually be have a young Wedge Antilles when he first forms the squadron or whatever. So okay. it's actually back around like right after the, you know, Episode Four or New Hope or whatever Star Wars. That's right, because the Han Solo one's supposed to be young Han Solo too, right? Right, right, um, and it's gonna have Mad Michelson in it, which I'm super excited. Oh, about. Oh, that then I am actually more interested in that. Then I, I'm a big Mads fan, so yeah, interesting. Oh, are you, are you gonna read the book Aftermath of what happens in the 30 year interval? No, I did read. On, no, I did read a, a Io9. If you go out there now, they have a kind of like a, 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 a synopsis. They have a page that basically says all the stuff that kind of happened in like little sound bites. Um, so I mean, that was enough. I, I got the gist. Okay, I'll have to check that out then. Thanks for the yeah. heads up. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Uh, yeah, so um, so here's the big news. I know we've been hearing about it all summer. Oh, boy. Uh, but now it's rumored. There there are rumors coming from Belfast that uh, Kit Harrington is actually filming scenes um, over at the, the wall for Game of Thrones. So I'm feeling pretty confident, not that I wasn't feeling pretty confident to begin with, that we will see Jon Snow. Yeah, but is uh, it... Is it going to be a dead clone Jon Snow? Like, you know, when the dead guys come back, the, the walkers, the ice walkers? It could be. I mean, it could be, but I really think that it's going to be like a, like a Beric Dondarrion situation from whenever that was, season two, season three. The guy that the count cut in half and then the other, the, the priest brought him back to life. I think it's going to be that. Interesting. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad that we, we get to maintain one of the dullest uh, heroes of any series <laughs> ever. So that's good. Welcome back, Kit. We're happy to have you. Whatever, man. Jon Snow for the win. I just don't... Okay, fine. I just don't see him as a... a, He doesn't instill me with any real uh, kind of sense of awe or... Like, I want to follow that guy. I don't... I know they try and build that up on that show, but I I don't really get it. No? No. But, I mean, what's your your alternative, really? Uh, uh, Dinklage, man. I'm a Dinklage guy. Yeah, well, he's not going to be running the show. I mean, yeah, Dinklage is the best. He does to run the show, the but he runs the show from behind the scenes. <laughs> he's the he, he's the puppet master. By being sardonic. Exactly. There you go. All so right. I guess I'll go with the dragon lady. Dragon lady sucks. She's the worst. Whatever. <laughs> just, I don't have really anybody really to get behind on that show except Dinklage. He's the only one I really <laughs> care about. Whatever. Now that Joffrey's dead, he's the only one I care about finding out what happens to him. <laughs> Joffrey was your man. That was the I, guy just, I kept waiting for horrible things to happen to him. <laughs> I almost almost feel too that it, it was like a waste. Like I wanted something worse. Yeah, being horribly poisoned to death wasn't enough. Not for me. All right, well there you go. Not for me. All right, anything else? That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I brought the energy today since our first show in weeks. Uh, 2015 year end preview. Here's all the stuff that you need to see, or at least you should be made aware of, that's coming out for the rest of the year. Uh, next, Again, this weekend, there's the, Mar- the M. Night Shyamalan film, The Visit, which surprisingly is getting generally good reviews. Yeah. This yeah. is his first positive RT score I could, that I've seen in like in 10 years. Um, we'll probably check it out, so I'll report back, but good for him. But that's not, we're starting the, we- the week after. We're going on September 18th forward. Uh, the big one I think you're looking for is Black Mass, right? Johnny Depp is Whitey Bulger. Oscar buzz already. Mm, a return really to form. Good. Also includes Joel Egerton, Benedict Cumberbatch, Kevin Bacon. So that's a big one. There's a couple other films coming out too, Matt, on the 18th. Any one of, which one are you more interested in? Sicaro or Sicario or Cooties? Uh, out of those two, I think... Uh... I don't know. I guess I guess Cooties because I've heard a lot of good things about it. Although Sicario looks really really interesting as well. Um, I mean, I'm a big fan of Benicio del Toro, so um, I'm gonna change my mind. I'm gonna go with Sicario. Yep, Sicario. Like it's a limited release on the 18th. It'll go wider afterwards. Emily Blunt is a young FBI agent uh, trying to take down one of the cartels, and uh, I'm not quite sure del Toro's thing. Is he a, a hitman that teams up with them, or are they hunting him, or? See, I I'm thought he was sure. just another another agent. Oh, or, okay. 
maybe from another agency. Maybe he's like the CIA or, or something like that. Interesting. All right. Well, it started, it's directed by Dennis uh, Villanueva, who did Prisoner's Enemy. And he's actually right now prepping Blade Runner 2. So you're oh. going to want to pay attention to see how this turns out. Uh, Cooties does look interesting. This is what, when the, the, the lunch food, the food at the cafeteria turns all the kids into zombies. Yep. And it stars um, Frodo himself. <laughs> as well as a bunch of other people. So that was uh, got a some good buzz when it came out. I think was it last year at, at Sundance 2014. So it's finally yeah. getting a release. I'm not sure how big a release it's going to be, but uh, hopefully right. it'll be able to, I think it's one of those that'll be limited release and then like uh, streaming on demand, iTunes type of thing. Mm-hmm. 9:25. We want to talk about films that seem lost to time. Eli Ross, The Green Inferno on the wow, September finally, 25th huh? is being finally. released. His homage to Cannibal Holocaust about a bunch of kids who go out to help in this area. Uh, and they, they crash and they run afoul of a cannibalistic tribe. Uh, I'm sure things are going to work out fine, but <laughs> we'll see what happens with the Green Inferno. Next up, you have to jump to October 2nd. That's where you're going to have Ridley Scotch, The Martian, where uh, poor, poor Matt Damon gets stranded on Mars. And we're going to, people are probably going to go back and get him. But he's got to survive for what? Years, I'd assume, right? I mean, you can't just whip up a trip yeah, to Mars, yeah. do you? Yeah, you know, you can. I mean, it, depending on how far we've advanced, I guess how quickly it'll go. But, I mean, yeah, it's got to at least take years. So, per the trailer, he's got to science the shit out of some stuff. That's right. And he seems to. So, I'm sure, again, just like Green Inferno, everything will turn out fine for Matt Damon in The Martian. Now, I'm not so sure about how things turn out, though I guess I could just Google it. Uh, the Legend, or just, excuse me, Legend is being released at a limited release. This is Tom Hardy playing both of the Cray twins. Right. Uh, we're big Tom Hardy fans here. I still think he should be picked to be the next James Bond, though I don't mind Craig sticking around for two or three more films. But Tom Hardy's version of uh, starring as the Craze and Legend is being released as well. A week after that, Matt, uh, and feel free to jump in at any point if any, if any of this stuff sounds interesting to you. Okay. October 9th, <laughs> uh, Danny Boyle's Steve Jobs film starring Michael Fassbender as the titular Jobs is being released. There's been a bunch of Steve Jobs movies. I can't imagine Fassbender could do a better job than Kutcher. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. We'll have to see about that. What do you think? Do you think that... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, obviously Kutcher absolutely looked the part. Um, you know, I'm not that interested in it, in this at all, even though I'm a big fan of Michael Fassbender. I mean, I'll, it's one of those things I'll catch on HBO at some point, you know, a year from now when it just happens to be on. And Danny Boyle, though. That's the other, Don't forget that part of it. Yeah, I know, but still. You know, Unless they just come out and say it's like just absolutely amazing, um, then sure. But I mean, I'm gonna temper my expectations right now. Like social network type of yeah. A thing. Yeah. Can I tell you something? I feel the exact same way. I have, for some reason I have like no interest to see this, even though everybody involved in it are people that I love. So interesting. Great minds. We just we know we know what's up. Yeah. That's why we do this podcast. Robert Zemeckis's version <laughs> of Man on a Wire, his f- film version of the documentary. The Walk is being released as well, star in a limited release starring Jiggle, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, uh, directed by, of course, as I said, Robert Zemeckis. I haven't seen the documentary yet. It's been sitting in my Netflix queue for probably three years now, so maybe I'll finally get around to watch it. I hear it's phenomenal, uh, so we'll have to check that out. And then we're going to jump to October 16th, Matt, Bridge of Spies. Steven Spielberg, Tom Hanks, I don't know how you could possibly go wrong. Where Tom mm-hmm. Hanks plays what an insurance attorney or something to that effect, and he has to help a guy who's he represents a guy who's been accused of being a spy for the mm-hmm. Russians, and then he gets involved in this whole thing about trading a U.S. spy plane pilot for him. He has to go to Germany. It's it, it's a whole thing. It's yeah. actually supposedly based on a true story. I'll have to take their word for it. I don't know about anything that hasn't happened in the last two years. But uh, Bridge of Spies is being released. But I think even bigger for me, and I'm thinking maybe for you too, Matt, Crimson Peak is being released on October 16th. It's going to be pretty sweet. Guillermo del Toro's gothic horror film uh, starring, uh, what, Loki? And Mia Wasikowski, (laughs) Jessica Chastain, uh, Tom Hiddleston, of course. Uh, But I'm looking forward to Crimson Peak for a while now, so I'm I'm glad to finally catch that out. And did you hear what... uh, um ron perlman said about uh, about uh, hellboy 3 yeah here he keeps like babbling about it i, I don't know is it actually it's actually going to happen though he keeps wanting to push it i guess he talked to to 
to Del Toro about it and found out what the story was. And now he's like, we have to make this film. I don't know how we can, but we have to. It's, right. it's supposed to be absolutely insane, and he's desperate to make it. But we'll see what happens. I don't think so, sadly. October 23rd, as we get close to Halloween, we're looking at The Last Witch Hunter. That's the one with Vin Diesel. Yeah, where he gets to play his D&D character or something. That's right. <laughs> and then, of course, Paranormal Activity, The Ghost Dimension. I got to tell you, Matt, I was underwhelmed by the last Paranormal Activity film. I was. I haven't, I haven't seen one. I, I definitely saw the first two. I don't think I've seen any after that. And I thought they got better and better with each one until the fourth one. I know it's stupid, but I love the conceit of the oscillating fan with the camera on it for part yeah. three. There's just something so simple. It's something so genius about that. So uh, that's getting released. But probably the big release that week, I'm going to have to go with Rock the Cashbah. Okay. Gary Levinson film starring Bill Murray. A down on his luck music manager discovers a teenage girl with an extraordinary voice while on a music tour in Afghanistan. He takes her to Kabul to compete on a popular television show, Afghan Star. So it's got Bill Murray, Zoe Deschanel, Bruce Willis, Danny McBride, Scott Kahn. Uh, it's directed by Barry Levinson. So, I don't know, Levinson really has been hit and miss with me for years now. But you got Bill Murray, you know, and a pretty strong cast. That's something I might want to check out. Your big Halloween release, October 30th. What do you think, Matt? How about Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse? Have you seen the trailer for this? No, I haven't. I've heard some buzz about it, though. It, it's, it's, I saw a, uh, a hard R red band trailer for this thing, and it looks hilarious. All right. I cannot wait. It's basically these scouts are uh, they're in this peaceful town that's ravaged by a zombie invasion, and it's up to them to save the day. And it looks absolutely hilarious, and I'm really uh, looking forward to checking that one out. I doubt it's going to get a, special, a large release, but maybe we'll look out. November 6th, one of the biggest films of the year. Can you guess what that is? Uh, let's see. James Bond, maybe? Yes. Spectre is being released on November 6th. I'm still undecided if I'm going to walk out the door if they reveal Blofeld to be his half-brother. I'm considering <laughs> it. I am seriously considering it. You, you won't. You won't. Have I you won't. ever walked out of a movie ever? No, I haven't. All right, then. And you're not going to start with a James Bond movie. But if that's what they decide to do... I don't know. I just... All the trailers, it just it feels like that's what they're going to, and I can't. I don't know. I it's going to be great. Let's put it that way. I'll just I'm just going to say it's going to be awesome, and just just cross my fingers and hope for the best. Uh, though I got to admit, you know what? I'm now even getting a little nostalgic for the big volcano layers and the world domination plots. I'm starting to miss it a little bit. Are you? A little bit. I don't know you're why. The, you're missing the. You're missing all the cheesy gadgets and uh, laser la- crotch lasers and stuff like I, that. I am. <laughs> I'm starting to get there. I was thinking about the. I was watching Skyfall again, and I got through like the first hour and a half hour of it. But uh, it's still the most beautifully shot Bond film ever. Uh, but it's still, it's. I was kind of missing. You know, there's no laser in the watch. There's no. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. They're supposed to get more and more of that kind of stuff back into it, so but uh, still grounded in reality. We'll see. Yeah. November 20th is the big wrap-up for the Hunger Games. I'm hoping this Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2 is better than the last one because that, that Part 1, basically I felt was just filler, just build up for this final film. And it could have been like a half an hour long. Right. So. I, I honestly, I don't, I want to say I saw that movie, but I don't remember watching it at all. Yeah, I think I started it and I didn't know what the hell was going on, and I it, I just zoned out. You know, it's fine. You're fine. You really are. I don't think you really missed that much. Her and Peter get reunited, and they fight because he's brain controlled or brainwashed, and everything's fine. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, the Secret in Their Eyes, the U.S. remake of I think is it a Brazilian film? I can't remember, but it won Best Foreign Language Film, I believe, that year, back in 2009. And it's a slightly different version of the original one. If you haven't seen the original, check it out. It's really good. Uh, but it's a, it's a tight-knit team of FBI investigators, along with the district attorney supervisor, suddenly turned apart when they discover that one of their own teenage daughters has been brutally murdered. And uh, this one stars uh, Julia Roberts, so it takes over. And like she's the star, the hero of the film, when the original version, it's a, it's a guy. So they kind of rewrote that part for her. But still... The original is great. I'm high, high hopes for this uh, U.S. version. November 25th, 
you have The Night Before, which is that holiday film mm-hmm. with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Seth Rogen and Howard Mackey, which looks pretty funny. You have Victor Frankenstein with uh, Harry Potter and what's some of the other guy's name who I'm blanking on right now. That's how well I prepared. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe? Yeah. Well, Harry Potter and somebody else. Oh, okay. And then uh, I think the one I'm really looking forward to is Creed. Have you seen the trailer for Creed yet? No, I have not. If you're not familiar with Creed, it's the story of Apollo Creed's son. And they do a oh. great job of masking things in the trailer. Uh, but by the time that you, you kind of get to the end, and he, he's, he's in this guy's restaurant, and he goes, Hey, I, I heard you fought my father, a final, a big, you know, a secret third fight in a gym. And he goes, how do you know about that? Who told you about that? <laughs> you know, and, it, and it's, it's Stallone. It's Rocky. And, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm kind of looking forward to Creed. I, I, I have high hopes that it's going to be a lot of fun. Michael B, Michael B. Jordan stars in it. And it's by the guy who directed Fruitvale Station. And if you haven't seen Fruitvale Station, I think it's on Netflix right now. Also starring Michael B. Jordan as well. That film will break your heart. Uh, based on the true story of what happened there. So, check that out. December 4th, Matt, from the director of Trick or Treat, we have Krampus, the Halloween horror film. Mm, I mean, the Christmas nice. horror film, the Christmas horror film. If you're not familiar with Krampus, you can Google that. He's kind of, he's the, he, he's who comes after all the bad boys and girls on Christmas. Is yeah, Krampus, that is, is some... Is that German? What's the origin again for Krampus? I don't remember. Yeah, it is German. Uh, it's like uh, St. Nicholas, you know, his, his basically, yeah, his opposite. He, he shows up and... Um, gathers up the wicked children and drags them off to his lair to eat them so it's it's some pretty uh pretty uh, pretty twisted shit that only germans could come up with yeah so i'm looking forward to that one i think there's already a movement to try and ban it from theaters because it's christmas oh really <laughs> yeah and then the uh the new version of Macbeth during michael fassbender and marion cotillard is coming out as well which i'm really excited about mm. checking that out december 11th is ron howard's moby dick adaptation in the heart of the sea which I gotta confess, man, I'm not really that excited about. That's on yeah. the 11th, and then just December 18th, the big film of the year, Sisters, Tina Fey, Amy <laughs> Poehler, is being released as well. I think that wraps it up. Yeah, I think that's that's you know it's it's a pretty it's a pretty tough pretty big day for them. I feel I bad. I don't. Well. I keep. I don't understand the counter programming on that. All right, we all Star Wars. Are, the Force Awakens opens up on December 18th. Why would you run anything for the same day? If you're doing like a big action film, counter program with sisters. I get that. But Star Wars is like a universal appeal type thing, you know? It's 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 an event film. I don't I don't understand the logic behind it. So, anyway, December 18th, Star Wars The Force Awakening Awakens, the number one film of 2015. The number one grossing film of the year uh it i'm predicting except i'm including the 2016 returns you have to because it's at the end of the year right mm-hmm. but since it's released in 2015 i'm gonna say it's gonna be um what was the big film after all that uh, uh jurassic world jurassic world yeah that's <laughs> that's pretty tall order i mean that's what third in third place third or fourth place now yeah so it's gonna i'm telling you matt it's gonna be huge it's gonna be huge, huge, as <laughs> as Trump and Bernie would say, huge, huge. So, are you are you at all looking forward to Star Wars: The Force Awakens? Yeah. So, I mean, I when I when I first heard about this, I got pretty uh, p- pretty tempered here because I was burned so bad, which I've talked about at length on this show by the prequel series. But the more I watch it and the more I see like trailers and stuff, the more stoked I get. But I am, I am fighting my impulses i'm trying not to get too into like all the toys and collectible stuff i'm trying to Mm -hmm. ignore all of that going on and just stick with just the film so but i am getting pretty excited yeah i haven't got sucked into anything else outside of the films themselves either uh so i've been pretty good so far though i i always think i'm gonna buy that aftermath book but now that you've told me i can get all the relative or meaningful plot points on that website i'm gonna do that Sorry, okay. you lost yeah. a customer, so <laughs> all because of Matt. There's still a couple other films coming out that year. Uh, this Actually, on Christmas Day, you have Concussion, which is Will Smith uh, playing the doctor who diagnoses the NFL's concussion problem. 
mm-hmm. and their fight to stop him from making it public. It looks really interesting. I want to check that out. And then David O. Russell's Joy, starring uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. I'm not quite sure what to make of that film yet, if you haven't seen anything about it. It's supposed to be the wild story of a family across four generations centered on the girl who becomes the woman who finds a business dynasty and becomes a matriarch in her own right. It, the trailer looks really interesting. The problem is I really have no idea what this film is about. I'm sure we'll find out more as we get closer. Uh, and then finally, The Revenant, uh, Inaratu's latest film, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, gets a limited release on Christmas Day, as well as Quentin Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. Uh, mm. Has to be one of the more anticipated films of the year. A limited release on Christmas. Yeah, I'm looking forward to both of those movies. I'm a, I'm a fan of the Western, um, so I think they both look pretty good. And then I, I don't have a, an actual date yet, I think, um, or maybe it's around the same time, but Daddy's Home, Will Ferrell and, and Mark Wahlberg team up again. Okay. Uh, I loved the other guys, so I am curious to see what the two of them do together. Let's check that out. So those are the big releases, Matt. I don't know, was there anything else that I didn't mention that you're interested in seeing? No, I think that's, that's pretty much it. I couldn't find anything else. So that's going to be pretty much your programming on this show as well for the rest of the year for the most part. Uh, there's a few things too uh, I'm going to try and since we haven't been around for a while I have still seen some stuff we just haven't had the time to sit down so Matt I'm going to I'm not sure if it's going to be this weekend or maybe within the next week if you want to join me you're more than welcome to but here are the films I'm going to be talking about you ready? I've seen yep. all of these Straight Out of Compton American Ultra Trainwreck Ricky and the Flash The Gift Mr. Holmes and then the documentary The Best of Enemies so those are all things I've seen and we'll be discussing at some point in the near future. Uh, yeah, so that's that. I may do, I have, I'm going to be part of a, a new feature. I'm going to do a whole episode of it though. And this feature is called Matt. Oh yeah! For stuff that I didn't get, it, you know, that I've seen that I didn't get a chance to talk about. Or things you may have forgotten or things you may have missed. So those are going to be all featured in that. In the meantime, shoot us an email at feedback at thefirstrun.com. I don't know what's going to happen with this show because... YouTube has changed everything about how they broadcast shows now. On the, and I have to, I have to dive into that this weekend and figure that all out. So I'm not even sure there's going to be a video cast this week. It may just be the audio, uh, which you can find at thefirstrun.com. Do a search on iTunes as well, and we're on Facebook, Twitter. Um, I want to say YouTube. You can watch the old shows on there. That'll be fun <laughs> for a while. And yeah, that's the big show for this week. Matt, anything else you wanted to add there? Uh, no, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm. I'm I feel like I did a lot of talking this week. Well, we kind of, we really, you know, we had a mission. You know, we were we we're really kind of focused here, and we're, we're, you know what, we're just kind of getting back into the game here. That's true. You know what we should have done is we should have rotated the, the dates. Mm. That's my fault. It's okay. Next time. It's all right. You know what, after however many hundreds of episodes you've done, you can we can have a, a little off show once every once in a while. <laughs> so this is the first time you listen to the show. I promise you, it's better than this, mm-hmm. typically. So give us a chance another time. Maybe watch watch or listen to one of the old shows. If you really want to do, you go to the archives and watch like the first few years episodes. You know, the first mm-hmm. couple. There are some great ones on there. <laughs> I'm telling you, Antichrist. Just Google the Antichrist, the first run episode. It's probably one of our best. Uh, Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch was pretty good. Yeah. Really, any of the ones were. We got mad at one of one of the rest of the other ones. <laughs> What's what? Morning Glory too is one Morning of my all time favorites. Too, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, like they say, you know, you're never as good as you are when you're on a roll. You're never as bad as you are when you're losing. I feel like that's where we are right now. Mm-hmm. So that's very true. All right. Well, that was fun and odd and weird. All right. Well, it's- you know what. It is what it is. It's good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Things will be much smoother next week. And we'll take an extended break, and we'll see you guys all in a week. Take care. Don't you like me? Why, well, I, I think you're wonderful, baby, but I don't think your Uncle Ari would approve. Him? He thinks I'm still a virgin. Yes, well, you get your clothes on, and I'll buy you an ice cream. 